Hi, I'm Ben from The Things Industries, and today I'm going to compare four popular LoRaWAN asset trackers. The four trackers are the Titelic Industrial GPS Tracker, the Digital Matter Yabby Edge, the IO Things IO Tracker, and the QuickLink GL52LP. I'll compare features, battery life, ease of use, size, and price, and I'll also show you how to use all the trackers in the Thing stack. First up is the Tectelic Industrial GPS Tracker. It features a full-fledged GNSS scanner, a Bluetooth low energy scanner, an accelerometer, a temperature sensor, and it's all sealed in this IP67 housing. The housing is about 14 centimeters long by 10 centimeters wide. The tracker comes completely sealed, and to turn it on, you need to apply a magnet to a reed switch on the back in a special configuration. Applying the magnet also triggers an uplink. The Tectelic comes with really sensible defaults for sending location uplinks, and it's also very easy to configure it via downlinks. It can be configured to send location data, BLE scanning data, temperature data, accelerometer data, or whatever data you want, um, either on an interval or when the magnet is applied on the back. Two D-cell batteries give it a battery life of 8 to 10 years with a default heartbeat of one hour. Tectelic has a really nice app which allows you to claim the device and add it into the ThingStack automatically, but that app is still in development, and so I use the device repo to add the GPS tracker in the console. Here's what it looks like to activate and use the tracker in the ThingStack. Tectelic has added the industrial GPS tracker to the device repo, so it's just a matter of selecting it from the dropdown, adding keys, and then you automatically get a payload formatter. So it's really easy to see what the uplink data means. The Tectelic Industrial GPS Tracker retails for about 165 euros. Next up is the Digital Matter Yabby Edge. Digital Matter makes really popular trackers with lots of different wireless technologies, and now they've used their expertise to design a great tracker using the Semtec LR1110 chip. The Yabby Edge is about 9 centimeters long by 6 centimeters wide in its IP67 housing. The LR1110 gives low power GNSS and Wi Fi scanning. It boasts a 10-year battery life with hourly heartbeats. The LR1110 uses Semtec's LoRa Cloud, so you'll need to pass the passive GNSS and Wi-Fi scan data to an external API in order to get actual GPS coordinates. Digital Matter also offers a service called Location Engine, which handles all of this for you, and then also updates the device um, using an almanac, which improves GNSS performance automatically. If you're looking for a fleet-ready, cloud-based service, this is a really great option. To provision your own keys or configure the device, Digital Matter has a LoRaWAN provisioning tool. It connects via pogo pins on the chip, and in the tool, you can configure everything. Accelerometer sensitivity, how often the device updates, whether movement triggers an update, off hours, anything you can imagine. The tool is really well designed, and it's also easy to program a series of devices. The Yabby Edge supports LoRaWAN's versions 1.02, 1.03, and 1.1, and Digital Matter seems really on top of supporting the latest spec and, uh, and providing great backend support. The documentation is great, and it's easy to figure out how to design your own backend implementation, but then Digital Matter also offers this plug-and-play ecosystem, which allows you to easily get, get location data and to manage all of your devices um, with very, very minimal effort on your part. 
I didn't have access to Digital Matters backend service, the location engine, but I was still able to activate the device and use a payload formatter to see what the uplink data means. Here's what it looks like to activate and use the Yabby Edge in the Thing stack. Digital Matter has added the tracker to the device repository, so it's just a matter of selecting it, choosing your profile, and then entering keys. The device repository entry comes with a payload formatter, which allows you to see most of the data in a human readable format. The format of location data is a little bit more complex and the payload formatter doesn't support that, but they have their prot protocol fully defined. So you can write your own decoder or you can just use Digital Matters backend to do all of the heavy lifting for you. The Yabby Edge retails for about 50 euros. Next up is the IO Tracker from IO Things. This is a tiny device which packs great features. It's only about six centimeters long by three centimeters wide. By default, it does low power triangulation via LoRaWAN, but it can also be configured to use GPS, Wi-Fi scanning, and Bluetooth low energy scanning. BLE scanning allows it to do indoor tracking if you have an existing map of the Bluetooth beacons in a building, for example. Wi-Fi scanning can be done using publicly available information from Google. It also has sensors for temperature, shock, light, and optionally humidity and pressure. It features an emergency button, which can be configured to uplink any kind of sensor data, and it also has an alarm and an LED, making it really useful for personal safety devices. Using default settings and lower WAN triangulation, the battery should last about two years. Changing that to GPS reduces the battery life to six months, about. On the other hand, if you configure it to only do lower WAN triangulation on button presses, you can probably get a battery life of up to 10 years. The tracker is clearly designed to be as easy for end use as possible. It comes pre-activated on the Things network, although it's still on V2, soon they'll update that to V3, and it's integrated automatically with their web app. So you also get login credentials and you can see the position of your tracker on the map without doing anything. Here's what it looks like to use the web app. In the dashboard, you can immediately see where your device is. You can enable GPS, activate the alarm, see a log of events, and see all of the sensor data each time the device uplinks. To activate the tracker on your own TTN account or another network server, there's a smartphone app which allows you to provision the lower WAN keys. The tracker is easy to just receive and use in the dashboard app, but for completeness, I also provisioned my own keys and then activated it in the Things stack so I could see the data. Like I said, uh, IO Things is migrating from the Things Network V2 to the Things Stack V3, and the payload formatter that they had available didn't work in the Things Stack when I tried it. But I sent them an email, and in a couple hours, they sent me back an updated payload formatter, and so I was able to see all of the uplink data in the Things Stack that this is sending in a really, really nice format. And I also thought that the response was, was really great, and it's clear that they're very actively developing this device. The uplink protocol is also well documented, so it's easy to write your own integrations if you want. Here's what it looks like to use the IO tracker in the Thing stack. The device is not yet in the device repo, but hopefully IO Things will add it soon. So for now, you just enter the lower end information and the keys. and use the payload formatter that's available on their website. This gives really nicely formatted payloads where you can see all of the device status and the sensor data that it's sending. The IO Tracker retails for 89 euros. Finally, we have the QuickLink GL52LP. 
This is a no-nonsense GNSS tracker, and in its enclosure, IP67 rated, it's about nine centimeters by six centimeters wide. GPS is the only available sensor data, but it boasts a battery life of four years with one hour GPS heartbeats. The Quick Link is an OEM device and it doesn't come pre-provisioned with lower end keys, so you will need a programmer to put keys in it in order to activate it. The programming tool is Windows only, but it allows you to configure update intervals, geofencing, and whether the device is activated by motion. Here's what it looks like to activate and use the Quick Link. The Quick Link retails for about $100. And that's it. So hopefully this gives you some general idea about what it's like to use some popular LoRaWAN trackers, what features are available and what the usability is like. Thanks for watching.